Good morning, class. Welcome. My name is Josh Hargis, and I will be your professor today for MBAC 696, the MBA capstone course here at Regis University. Today, I will be teaching you about organization performance management. I'm sure most of you are wondering, what is organization performance management in the first place? I saw you, Billy. I know that that was a question that you were wondering. Good question. Organization performance management is a process of making sure that the organization is utilizing its resources properly in the pursuit of the organization's goals. The concept of performance management is commonly applied to employee development. It is with the executive and management teams to understand the importance of developing a system that charts the progress of the organization and looks to see when changes in policy or procedures are necessary to hit the company's goals. Performance management is continuous and is fostered around motivating and inspiring all the members in an organization to perform to a level they believe that the person is capable of doing. By this mentality of lifting those up and supporting them, this will lead to better productivity by the individual and ultimately a better performance of the organization as a whole. Effective performance tries to align individuals' goals with the organization's goals. Organizations who utilize performance management effectively typically have a competitive advantage over the organizations within the industry. By having measurable, well-defined goals, one can see that is leading to success and failure with the current state of the organization. Effective performance management can greatly improve the organization's success. However, poor performance management can have negative consequences on an organization as well. Now, can anybody tell me what groups of individuals are directly affected by performance management? All right. Well, oh, Bill, what was that? Correct. Employees, customers, and the organization. Now, as you can see here, employees, so a pro performance management system, we'll go through it. So pros, clarify definitions, job descriptions, be clear on the descriptions that you're giving, success criteria, motivate the individuals to hit their goals, increase motivation to perform, find ways to motivate your team and develop them, increase self-esteem, and enhance self insight and development. Now those are positives. Now some of the negatives that can come about from poor performance management systems. Low self-esteem. They don't feel that they're ready or developing. Employee dissatisfaction. They're just not happy in their job therefore it could cause a downfall for the organization. Low morale and confusion. Now as far as for the manager piece some of the pros of a benefit would be communicate supervisors' views of performance more clearly. Managers gain insight about the subcoordinates. Employees become more competent and better and more timely as far as top performers. Now some of the cons of poorly managed performance management systems are high turnover, decreased motivation, unfair standards and ratings, and loss in trust of the team. Now, as far as the organization as a whole, we got to look at the pros. Clarify organization's goals. Remember, one team, one dream. Facilitate organizational change. Better protection from lawsuits. It allows individuals to believe in the system, and the organization is going to do that as well. Now, some of the downfalls, if you have a poor um, performance management system, you're going to waste a ton of money, time, and increase... Um, litigation as well as failure. Don't want any of that. So, as we continue on, every organization goes through various phases of success and failures. It's the nature of the business. It is with the success and failures one must truly look into the organization's ditch, reach the success, or overcome the failure that came about. Performance management can be viewed as a continuous cycle of phases. Plan, monitor, review, and evaluate. Now, 
how are these phases utilized in the world of organizations? Anybody? Jessica? All right, well, let's continue on. As you can see, <clears throat> we start with the performance management cycle. There's plan, we want to identify, clarify, and agree upon expectations. Identify how the results will be measured. Agree on monitoring process. Document the plan. Monitor and evaluate the progress. Take corrective action or make any changes if they are required. Review and evaluate. Annual performance, review and evaluation. Sign off. New cycle begins. Now, this is a constant process that will continuously evolve. It's something that we must always look at. An organization can never become stagnant. The way that many of the organizations utilize organization performance management is they watch how they're performing and utilizing the balance of the scorecard. <clears throat> this tool was created in the early 90s as a way of the organizations to define the organizational strategy and determine how to motivate individuals to su suggest improvements that were aligned with the strategy of the goals of the organization. The balance scorecard takes the following four perspectives into account. Finances, customers, internal business process, people, and learning. Ultimately, we come back down to the strategy of the organization and how the strategy is communicated. Organizations should be utilize the following steps with performance manager to yield success. First, the mission should be clarified and should be in line with the strategic objectives of the organization. Second, the strategy must be communicated to the whole organization. Third, Goals should be quantifiable, quantifiable in order to determine where the goals can be measured and how resources can be allocated appropriately. Fourth, and one of the keys behind performance management is motivating all the individuals to have the strategy incorporated to every single thing that they do. Fifth, and lastly, management must have a system governing and institutionalizing so that this method of strategic focus can be continuous. Scroopers, 2016. Now, as far as operations um, and strategic management, you want to always continuously look at Six Sigma, Lean, or ADMI methodologies or additional tools that are utilized the realm of organizations, um, especially in performance management, to improve within an organization. Six Sigma focuses on the development in terms of the process within the organization with a goal of eliminating defects to nearly zero. By streamlining the process, it leads to decreased numbers of defects in products, which overall improves quality, which is one of the most important things to consumers, such as me and you. By having a constant process, it decreases the chance of variability, which could lead to defect. Defects are a reflection of the organization not providing the customer with what they desire or expect. It therefore decreases the cost and increases profit. As with this streamlined process, more of the product is being sold that is accurate, which leads to less defective products, less returns, and better reputation by the organization which increases sales. With a streamlined process, it often leads to decreased time with everyone is aware of the process and enhance the process in terms of time. When the organizations are trying to determine if a new process should be implemented, they compare the process time to where one currently is streamlined as all their data Will actually reflect in the streamlined process. Turn down 2013. As we discuss Six Sigma, it is explained in the format of improving current process. 
Now, I have a question. Can Six Sigma also be used for a new process development? Why, yes. There are two key concepts of Six Sigma, and that is DMAIC. And that is define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And the second one is DMADV. Define, measure, analyze, design, and verify. Now, DMAIC is a method used for existing processes, while DMADV is used for new products or processes. The lean method focuses on streamlining the process as far as manufacturing, and therefore the overall production process by eliminating any wasteful steps that do not add direct value to the production risk. There are eight waste of the lean concept identified as downtime, defects, overproduction, waiting, non-utilized talent, transportation, inventory, motivation, and increasing, or sorry, in extra Processing. Yeah, that's two. What does, now I do have a question, what or who does the organization have in mind when they're eliminating these wastes? Correct. The customer. The organization will evaluate if there is anything in these areas that do not add value to the end customer and eliminate it to therefore improve the manufacturing and production process by eliminating unnecessary time, talent, or financial investment. Oftentimes, the organization use a hybrid of the Six Sigma and Lean Concepts as they both have the same goal and are customer focused. Now, to conclude, measuring performance and creating change within an organization that is sustainable leads to benefit for the organization is a key to continual development and success of the organization. In order for anything in performance management to yield positive results, it takes the collaborative work of managers and employees within the organization who have the organization's strategic goal in mind. Performance management is a continuous process where objectives must be set, progress towards meetings, objectives is reviewed often, and feedback provided on this progress and any opportunities for improvement. HR counsel. Performance management is fostered around effective communication within the organization and development of the talent within the organization, which leads to continual development of the organization. Ultimately ideal character I ultimately an ideal organization with effective performance management will have the following characteristics. <clears throat> As you can see, there are 14 as they consider the ideal characteristics. But in a performance management area, I believe that each one of these play a critical role. But ultimately, I feel that a well-cultured, well-centered employee morale development will ultimately teach the individuals about performance management, especially of the organization. I hope you guys learned something today. And I appreciate your time and everything. Thank you so much.